I've always been intrigued by BMWs. I mean, I am a German car guy. I like the German car ethos. I like perfection in engineering and making things perfect in extremely long convoluted names. But Porsche has always been in my blood and my soul. So I'm gonna try to appreciate this for what it is. This, by the way, being a BMW M440i xDrive, so on and so forth. The name goes into infinity. It's where the American market has these muscle cars that don't cost so much. They're more user-friendly, they have four seats, and you get a little hint of noise and a little hint of power, but it really sort of belongs in the low-end pricing range. Europe does it slightly differently. And this car is a great example of that. This is a 385 horsepower, so not huge, 500 Newton meters, which is huge. Uh, four door kind of muscle car saloon. It's uh, an affordable way to get an M4 like driving experience, but with a little bit more comfort. And I know I'm late to the game. They've been out for the last two years and I'm sure you've seen all the videos, but I think it's pretty cool. It's got leather everywhere on the outside. It's beautiful paint and insert name here, blue. Um, for the last two years that people have seen this double kidney design, they've been a little bit uncomfortable about it. We've all sort of seen the design and been a little bit on edge and a lot of us have been a lot on edge. It's not cool, it's different, right? It's bigger, it's more air. And what BMW says is it's bigger to let more air get into the radiator and into the engine. But did they have to make it so tall? I feel like they could have gotten the same expression if they made the kidneys a little bit smaller and just had more aero throughout the bottom. So aside from the overgrown pig snout-like kidney grill, I kind of like this eyebrow that they've added that points beyond the headlight and sort of, it makes it look angry, it makes it look aggressive and mean, more muscular and more vicious. I also like that the wheels, they don't have to be 21 inch. The biggest size you can get from factory on this car is 19 inch. And around back, the details are clean, they're smooth, they're sleek, the lights, they make sense. There's working exhaust pipes. There is a little bit of fake arrow back here. I wish the arrow was purposeful. It is not a full blown M car, but if it's gonna have the letter M on the back, it's gotta have some sporty elements. I mean, there are some wins, some losses with this design, but I think overall it looks pretty cool. I think it's fun. I think it's muscular. I think it's, it's a civilized interpretation, a German interpretation of the muscle car. We have the car, it is dirty, it is filthy. The weather is pretty wild and crazy. Uh, super clean backdrop, at least, foggy. It's the further away you get from the car, the less you see of the car itself. The hero shot needs to be just a little bit more car focused. First, let's turn on the lights. With the fog, it's gonna look kinda cool because it's gonna catch the lights and the beams of lights are gonna stretch out away from the car a little bit better. So, lights on. I'm gonna start with the hero shot before I get to, uh, before I get to nitty gritty with the details. Uh, and I think that's gonna come in the form of this way, 45 degrees from the front. Low polarizer set to the hood of the car slash slightly down the side of it. Not too much though, because I don't want to get rid of that shoulder. Oh my God, it's super foggy. Could be cool to shoot super far away and just have like a hint of the car. It's a shame because I kind of want to go further, but the further back I go, the less you see of the car. I can show you that real quick. If I go all the way back here, power stance. Yeah, too foggy to be this far back. So we got to go closer. Although I kind of like the aesthetic. I think it's kind of cool that it's uh, alone in the fog. I think there's something neat to that. So I'm going to try something in between and shoot a little bit more in front so the headlights are a little bit more the focus of the photo. Look at that. That's a bit wild and crazy. I'm going to try to frame the photo with the logs by shooting the back of the car. Because I think where it's standing right now is pretty perfect. <laughs> Even here is almost too foggy. Let's see, I'm just going to try to frame the car with these logs and shoot at a roughly F2 so I focus past the logs. There we go. A 
Okay, dark, moody, mysterious. It's cool, it's what we have to work with. So I'm happy. Now we're gonna jump in the car, go to a different location, maybe a little bit less fog, a little bit more detail in the background, some driving shots, and uh, let's see how this thing handles. Oh, hi. You caught me in the middle of my uh, relax feature, which uh, closes the sunroof and heats up the steering wheel and plays super nice music with calming lights because this car does that kind of thing. <laughs> this car is made to take care of you as much as you're meant to take care of it. And there's something very cool about that. The seats incredibly comfortable and the driving incredibly relaxed. So let's put it into comfort mode. Let's start driving. And there you go, just that easy. The start stop feature is aided by a separate battery that has about eight kilowatts. So it doesn't add too much power. It is technically a hybrid, I guess, but its only purpose seems to be to help it sort of get going in a comforting manner so you don't end up being too stressed when you jump in the middle of traffic and when you hit this button, the sport button, which sends you into an entirely different dimension. This car becomes so sporty for what it is. God, it's, it's a tank. It's a tank with the sport mode. It, I mean, it's what, 1.7 tons? So it's not extremely heavy. It's not like a Panamera heavy, but it's heavy enough that you notice the weights being thrown around. But then when it's in sport mode, and it starts gearing down and it really tightens everything up. This car feels almost like an M car. Almost deserving of the M badge that it has branded across the back of it as an M44i. It is a lot of fun. There are a few bits and pieces that aren't super driver friendly. I think if you're a really focused driver and you like driving, you like to keep track of your revs in your tack and you want to see some feedback for how you're driving and the the rev counter goes backwards for some reason i don't quite understand that and the the speedometer goes the other way it's it kind of fights itself in that way and becomes a little unintuitive but the driving characteristics of this car are super interesting and I, when I say interesting, I mean interesting. It is good. It is a very good driving car. It handles very well. It is sporty when it turns in. Everything is tight. It feels nice and athletic. It feels very muscular. And the numbers sort of represent that. It has about 380, roughly, horsepower. Not huge, but it has about 500 newton meters of torque, which is monstrous. 500 newton meters of torque. So for this, if I'm trying to power through a turn like so, then I want to rely more on the torque to sort of get me out of it and send me into a new dimension of driving bliss. You don't necessarily rely on the horsepower. So in that sense, you keep the car around 3000 RPM and the car pushes you a little bit harder and you get a little bit more boost out of that. I don't know, I've driven this car for about an hour now and I feel like I have a pretty good understanding for the driving dynamics and I, it, you can learn to drive the torque instead of the horsepower and I think that becomes a way more fun driving experience than if you just jump into it and treat it as a race car, so to speak. The car is sort of of two minds and I'm of two minds about the car. Um, it, it's a bit of a bipolar driving experience in that when you're in comfort mode, the car takes care of you. It's very quiet, it's very comfortable. The seats, extremely plush, extremely well-fitted to me. Everything just feels nice. The lighting and the interior, everything is soft. And even the sound uh, is incredibly comforting and quiet. There's no road noise, at least no excess road noise. And it has this engine noise that it pumps into the cabin, which whatever, every car seems to do that these days, we've gotten used to it. But when you put it into comfort, it tones that noise down and it becomes a very relaxed, soft driving experience. Heated steering wheel, extremely soft, thick, nice steering wheel. It's a nice place to be. But the moment you hit sport mode, 
you get all that torque, you get that 500 Newton meters, you get the full 380 horsepower for whatever that's worth, and you get the full brunt of that inline six cylinder engine that you can also find in the things like the Supra, which are meant to be sporty. So it's got a sporty heritage and you can feel that, but the car is just, it's just so comfortable. It's like a, it's like a pinstripe sweatsuit. If you were to wear a pinstripe sweatsuit, I don't know when you'd wear it, but you could wear it everywhere and you'd feel as welcome in each occasion. It's too formal for home. It's too casual for work. And because of that, I kind of like it. I think this thing's cool. I like this car and I'm really excited to see what an unbridled, extremely sporty version of this, as in the M4, would feel like. But for now, I enjoy this car for what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, before we wrap things up, ooh, somebody opted for the butt heater subscription. <laughs> it's a little BMW joke for you. Uh, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, glad you found me. If you like what you see, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do the little bell thing. And uh, remember, every Monday at 6 o'clock, we edit photos together. I'll see you there.